Hi, welcome to week five of the free motion challenge quilting along. This week, we're taking a break from curves and working with dot to dot quilting. Let's get to it. Dot to dot quilting is a technique that I've been teaching for years. Basically, we're using reference points on our quilt as guidelines to quilt complex looking designs that are actually really easy. So what we're gonna do is work with one of the two basic shapes that make up dot to dot quilting, the wedge. It is such a basic technique, but the results that you can get with it are amazing. There are so many variations, I cannot wait to show you all the quilty eye candy that I have. Before we get started though, a quick word about rulers. You've probably already noticed this is a geometric design. It's very angular. Now, you don't have to have a ruler when quilting this on your home sewing machine. You can get straight-ish lines with your free motion quilting foot. I'm gonna show you both ways, with the ruler and without. The main idea is it doesn't matter what tools you have, just use them. If that doesn't make you feel comfortable, go ahead and pull out your walking foot. Now, I know it's a free motion challenge, but honestly, I don't care what you use as long as you're quilting. So if you wanna try that walking foot out, you feel more comfortable, you definitely can. So the dots or the reference points that we're using on this block are the center of the block, the corners, and then also the midway points of each side. Now, if you happen to have one of these stencils, those are gonna perfectly mark all those points for you. And I don't have to mark all these lines. In fact, what I can do is just use my water soluble pen just to kind of mark those points for me. Or I could use my pounce pad, or if you don't have the stencil, no worries, you can just find those points on your block. But here I have my basic dots and I'm ready to get started. This design starts from the very center. But what I'm gonna do is quilt a line straight up to the opposite edge. So almost like I'm going from center to like 12 o'clock on a clock. Now, even though I'm not using a ruler, I still think I'm gonna be able to get those straight-ish lines. So what I'm gonna do is just move in a smooth motion towards the top of that block. And as I approach it, I'm gonna stop when I get about a quarter of an inch away. Then I'm going to echo the side of my block till I get about a quarter of an inch inside that next corner. So I have the first part of my triangle. This design always comes home. I'm always gonna to return to that center of the block. However, if I don't feel comfortable moving in that diagonal motion, I can kind of twist the quilt ever so slightly so that I'm working in more of a vertical motion. Now, when I'm quilting these straight-ish lines, straight-ish, what I'm doing is I'm just moving my arms. I'm not using my whole body momentum. I'm just moving my arms and trying to keep it somewhat straight until I get into the center. When I go to quilt my next wedge, I'm gonna keep it very close to the one I've just quilted. So I'm gonna swing out about a quarter of an inch away from the one I just quilted. But the idea is I want these wedges to stay nice and close to each other. There's my first wedge, and now I'm keeping my second one nice and close. Now, if you're trying to quilt these straight-ish lines with your free motion quilting foot, if you're having a hard time with it, you're really struggling, try going just a little faster. What happens is sometimes when we're trying something new, we're a little nervous, so we hold on the quilt tightly, we hold our breath, and we stick our tongue out, and then we move slowly. Not that there's anything wrong with quilting slowly, but you'll get a better momentum if you go a little bit faster. I mean, not so fast that you're out of control, we don't want that, but definitely fast enough that that momentum can carry you through and give you that smoothish kind of line. And now I'll echo the side of my block and then back home. The thing to remember is you don't know where you're going, you wanna go home. I prefer to work vertically or horizontally, so I might just twist it a little bit. You'll notice I'm not rotating the whole quilt, I'm just kind of twisting this area and then echoing the side of my block. Once I get pretty close to that midway point, I know that it's time to stop and, well, you guessed it, return home. And then I'm just gonna twist this part right here so I don't have to do the whole smush and push, just a little rotation, and then bring it into the center. I'm moving just my arms and I'm trusting that even if it's not a perfectly straight line, it's gonna look fine. So I have my two wedges finished. I'm ready to keep adding more. I'm gonna quilt my next one, but I'm gonna stop about a quarter inch away from the edge. So now I'm gonna echo the side until I'm about a quarter of an inch away and then back into the center. Even though I prefer to work vertically, especially as I'm working towards the center of my block, I can't always see where that point is. But what I can do is kind of lean back a little bit or even twist the quilt ever so much so I can see where that is and then just start moving close to it. 
If you don't like all those lines coming together at that point, you can stop just a little short, that'll be fine. Of course, remembering if I'm not sure where to go, I wanna keep my wedges close to the previously quilted one, always returning back to that starting point. Now the reason I'm being very, very careful not to run it into the edge of the block is I don't wanna lose the side of my wedge. I wanna make sure that we can see that it's that triangle shape and that's gonna look really nice. And I'm gonna keep quilting those wedges around my block. If I'm not sure where to go next, I'm gonna use my finger to kind of trace that out. Um, that's gonna help me visualize where to go next and help me know that, you know, if I'm gonna end up in a hot mess or not. Now, I'm demonstrating this on a sewing machine without the ruler, because I want you to see that you can do it without it. And I'm just realizing now why I can't grab onto this quilt. I forgot to put on my gloves. Oh, much better. Here's the thing, you don't have to have a ruler to quilt those perfectly straight lines. I prefer it though, because I like working with rulers. If I were quilting this on my long arm, I would definitely use my ruler. The thing about quilting on a long arm is you can't easily change the position of your quilt. So you're gonna have to use that ruler to go in every different direction. On a sewing machine, I just feel more comfortable with it, so I prefer it. However, you don't have to have it, of course. And I have my next wedge, and then going back into that center point. Stopping before I hit the edge of my block, and I have just a few more. I think the reason I love using a ruler on a sewing machine is that I don't have to turn the quilt as much. I feel much more comfortable quilting these diagonal lines when I have the ruler to kind of help me, help guide me into it. and back into the center. Once I'm finished, it's time to see how it looks. So here we can see that whole block quilted. What really stands out is this unquilted area. So even if your lines aren't perfectly straight, all you're gonna have is that nice overall texture, which, you know, you've heard me say a couple times. Now that you know the basic shape, there are so many different things you can do. One easy way that you can change up this design is instead of having all the lines come into the center, you can have it offset just a bit. Basically, I'm gonna pick my spot where all my lines come to and offset it. Now, if I'm gonna offset it, I wanna make sure that it's done enough that it looks intentional, even if it's not, but everything else is still gonna be the same. I'm still gonna go to my midpoint, quilting out to the edge of the block, then echoing along the top, and then returning back to the home base. So there's my first wedge. Another easy variation that you can do is to add a little bit of echoing. Now, this might be something that I do, especially if I'm working on a bigger block and I want to have a lot more quilting, or I just, you know, I'm loving this design, I wanna really show it off. When I quilt my first wedge, what I'll do is stop, go ahead and echo inside of it before I move on. What I don't wanna do is come back and echo it later, because chances are I'll probably forget. I mean, I'm sure that would never happen to you, but you know, that definitely happens to me. So here's the thing, if you don't like all this thread coming to the center, you're definitely not gonna like it with the echoing because now we have even more. This design is thread heavy in the center. That's how it's meant to be. So it's gonna really draw your eye to that area. Make sure you use this in a block that you like or use a matching thread color. It's very important if you don't want the quilting to show up too much. Now I've got my first wedge done. I'm quilting my second one. This offset kind of center is really fun if you wanna give your quilt just a little bit of a different look. Or maybe you wanna draw the eye to a particular area of the block. Whatever the reason, it's just a fun option. Of course, it could be that you're just having trouble getting it to the center, so just make it offset and call it a fun variation. If I don't want all those threads coming directly to the center, I might stop just a little bit short and then go ahead into my echo. Even though it's not touching the center, I know that last line is gonna bring me into it. It just helps keep all the threads going from directly to the center. So what happens though if you miss it or your lines aren't perfectly coming to that point like you want them to? Well, I say just move on, don't worry about it. I've done this design a lot and it doesn't always work out perfectly where they come to the center, but our eyes kind of make it look perfect and that's the most important thing. All right, our next wedge. And 
you don't even have to echo each wedge. All right, let's see how that looks. Now, even though I'm showing a couple different variations in this block from the offset center to the echo lines, the main thing to remember is that as long as your whole block is quilted in, it's gonna look fine. When it comes to quilting variations of this design, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can do so much with it. You can use it in irregular shapes. You can use it in different size blocks. Oh, so what I'm gonna do now is show you some quilting eye candy. Now, this is meant to be inspiration and not intimidation. I don't want you to get overwhelmed. I just want you to think, wow, that is an amazing design. I can do it. One of my favorite ways to use this dot-to-dot -dot technique is in triangles. All you have to do is pick a home base, quilt those lines out to the edge, and bring them all home. Now, wherever you put the home base just depends on where you want the attention to be drawn. If you want it to come along the side, make all those lines come back to the middle point of one of the sides. Or you can pick one of the corners and have all the lines come back to that. This dot to dot technique is one of the most popular classes that I have. It's the most requested class that I teach when I travel to guilds and shows. It's also a craftsy class. So if you like this technique and you wanna try it out, you can check out that craftsy class where I show you a lot more variations and a lot more different ways to use this technique on your quilts. Use it to fill in those weird kind of shapes. If you have blocks with points or irregularly shaped areas that you're not sure what to quilt in, add some wedges. For instance, in this quilt I did for Tula Pink, it's called Peaks and Valleys, I quilted these wedges in between the blocks to give it a spiky, kind of fun, modern look. But that doesn't mean it's only for modern quilts. No, I use this on all kinds of quilts, even traditional. For instance, check out this bear paw kind of star block. I'm using those wedges to fill in those points. When quilting the dot to dot, I just need a home base. I need to quilt that line out to the edge, echo the sides, and then back. What that's gonna do is really help fill in that whole block with that dot to dot shape. In this bright, beautiful quilt, all the space in between these pointy blocks was just begging for some dot to dot quilting. I love how the lines draw the eye to the points of the block. It really fills in that shape and looks gorgeous. The trick to quilting dot to dot in irregularly shaped areas is to basically think of it the same way. I need a home base, I need to extend my line out to the edge, echo the sides, and then come home. Now, if you're not sure if it's gonna work in the area that you're trying to fit it in, go ahead and use your finger to trace out the path, or you could try marking out a few of the wedges. I think you'll be surprised just how many places these designs can fit. Okay, so what did you think? Are you a fan of straight-ish lines? Go ahead and try out one of these dot-to-dot -dot designs, whether the basic or some of the variations on your square. Leave comments letting me know if you have any questions. I love getting on there and answering them for you. If you're new to the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along, welcome. We're so excited to have you. Be sure to check out all the prior videos and you'll see all the designs that we've been working on. And I'll see you next week with the next video in the Free Motion Quilting Along Waves and Serpentine Lines. It's gonna be fun. Happy quilting.